Okay, so welcome back. We have been looking at the structure of an inference engine for a forward chaining production system. We have looked at this notion of working memory, working memory elements, rules. Then we have said that given the set of rules and given the set working memory, you will produce a, the match phase of the algorithm will produce a conflict set. The conflict set is a set of all matching rule instances with the matching data. And now the task is to say which of those instances should be executed next and that task is called the conflict resolution task. So, let us see what are the kind of strategies that we can implement for conflict resolution. Given that at any given point a problem solver may be faced with many choices, the key to effective problem solving is to be making informed decisions about which choice to make or making informed choices essentially. If you have studied heuristic search algorithms like best first search or A star, you would know that we have a notion of a heuristic function which looks at all the choices and gives them a value and says then you can say okay I will choose the choice with the smallest value and that value is a heuristic function and that is what we do when we are looking at search essentially. In rule based systems, rules encaps encapsulate the knowledge gleaned from the human experts essentially. And then we want to simply say all the rules that are applicable, which one to fire next. When one more than one rule matches the data, the inference engine has to make a choice as to which instance to execute next. It is a little bit analogous to which candidate to inspect next in search essentially. And we will look at some conflict resolution strategies that are popular. So, the first strategy which is necessary in fact is called refractoriness. It says that a rule instance may fire only once with a set of matching working memory elements. That okay, you have found this rule instance, it matches this piece of data and you can fire it, but you cannot keep firing the same rule again and again with the same piece of data. Assuming that the actions of the rule do not have anything which is deleting from the working memory element. If you are not deleting anything from the working memory element, even though the rule has fired, it would still match again. Refractoriness says that this is not allowed. Otherwise, there is always the danger that that one single rule will keep firing all the time. The idea of refractoriness comes from the way neurons fire in our brains uh, because when the, the way that neurons fire, if you have looked at neural networks, is that the uh, neuron gets inputs from many other neurons and there is some sort of a function built inside this which will look at, which will sum up the inputs and you know there will be some thresholding and maybe some sigmoid function or something like that. So, one the as they call in terms of neural network as the excitation level goes up the neuron will fire and it will create its own impulse which will travel down the axon of that neuron essentially. Now, what happens is that in, in physical brains these uh, excitation is in terms of chemical electrical signals. So, once it is used up uh, then uh, the neuron has to wait again for it to get built up again. So, it happens naturally there. So, when a neuron has received excitation that crosses the threshold, it fires once and then waits for new signals to come in essentially. So, the, the name refractoriness comes from there. In terms of rule based systems, it means that a rule instance with matching data should fire only once. We will see that that happens naturally in the implementation that we will talk about. So, this is the definition of refractoriness from this Merriam Webster dictionary. The insensitivity to further immediate stimulation that develops in irritable and especially nervous tissue as a result of intense and prolonged stimulation. As we will see, we will look at this algorithm called the Rate algorithm and refractoriness will happen naturally in this algorithm. 
Okay, so here is the second conflict resolution strategy. This is called lexical order essentially. It says that of all the rules that have matching instances, choose the first one that the user has stated. So, the user has written the rules in some order, choose the first one that matches. If a rule has multiple instances that match with different data, then choose the instance that matches the earlier data because the data also is an ordered set. The strategy, this strategy places the onus of the choice on the user. The user is more like a programmer and we have seen that this is the kind of strategy that Prolog uses. The Prolog says that I will look at all your rules in the order that you have written and the facts are also written inside that same file and they are also written in a particular order. So, Prolog always looks at things in lexical order. So, I have mentioned this a couple of times that real prolog as opposed to pure prolog. Real prolog deviates from the idea of pure declarative programming where I would only have to state the rules and the facts and it would somehow solve the problem for me. In prolog, the order in which you state the rules is also important which is a bit more like programming. So, here is another strategy called specificity. This says that of all the rules that have matching instances, choose the instance of the rule that is most specific. So, if one rule matches two pieces of data, another rule matches five pieces of data, then choose the one which matches more data. It is more specific. As you will see, specificity can be measured in terms of the number of tests that the pattern in the rule that the rules need. So, if you look at the swap program that we saw, it does some tests that there is one element uh, whose value is this thing, there is another element whose uh, index is greater but whose value is smaller. So, it is doing these tests. You can count how many tests it is doing and based on that you can decide which rule is more specific, which instance of the rule is more specific. The intuition is that the more specific the conditions of a rule are, the more appropriate the rule is likely to be in a given situation. That is an intuition that we often use. Remember that the working memory models the short term memory of the problem solver and rules constitute the problem's long term memory and reside in the quasi static long term memory. So, I am saying quasi static because you know you are allowed to change rules of course, but in general when you have built a rule based system, uh, it will be kind of constant. Specificity, choosing this specificity as a conflict resolution strategy can facilitate default reasoning. What is default reasoning? If you do not, if you know some things then you make an inference. If you know more things, then maybe you make another inference and you do the default only when you do not know the other stuff essentially. If you know more specific things, then you take the default action essentially. So, the, the default default action is that for example, I uh, will make a cup of tea at 5 o'clock, but then if something happens and you know, maybe I have to attend to something and some other facts come into play, then I may have a different action essentially. So, here is an example from uh, the game of contract bridge which uh, uh, I hope all of you will learn at some time and this is from the bidding phase of the game. So, in bidding phase people are it is like an auction that is happening and you are making bids essentially. So, I do not want to get into the game that would take up too much time here, but I just want to give you an, some instance of rules where specificity would be used to take actions when you know more specific information, but if you do not have that information then you just use a default rule. So, here is a default rule uh, which says that unless you have good cards for example, you just pass and the default rule simply says that there is a player x and uh, it is his turn to or her turn to bid and the next player to bid will be after that would be y essentially. So, it is your turn to bid after you y would bid and then the default thing is pass. You know, if you do not have some good cards then you would pass, but if you had good cards then you would that data would be stored in the working memory somewhere. So, you can see that the first two rules patterns are the same here as in the default rule but there is something else given here. Okay. So, you do not have to get into the details, 
that it is that uh, let us say there is something called high card points that bridge say bridge players use. So, if you have 15 or 16 or 17 high card points and if the shape of your hand is balanced by this we mean how many hearts you have, how many spades you have, how many clubs you have, how many diamonds you have. If the distribution is balanced, so there are certain things which are balanced, there are some th certain things which are not. Then you make this bid which is an opening bid, its bid name is no trump and its denomination is 1. So, bridge players would recognize this as saying that if you have 15 to 6, 17 high card points and you have a balanced hand, then you open one no trump. If you do not have all this stuff, then you just pass essentially. Of course, there are other bids for making other, uh, other patterns for making other opening bids. So, in general of course, you would choose the most specific rule instance and you do not have to worry about whether my program will pass by mistake as long as you specify that the conflict resolution strategy is specificity. Always choose the more specific rule and if you cannot find a more specific rule, then go to the default rule. We will look at default reasoning again. As an exercise, just write this two rules. One says that birds fly and the other says that uh, if you are a bird and you are a penguin, then you do not fly essentially. Uh, then you can see that specificity would help essentially. Okay. So, one more strategy that we often use is called recency and recency says that of all the rules that have matching instances, choose the instance that matches the most recent working memory element. So, remember the working memory elements have timestamps and you have let us say 15 rules in your conflict set and all of them matching different uh, working memory elements. It says choose the one which has the highest recency. It can be implemented by looking at the timestamps of the working memory elements, but we will see that there is a simpler way of doing it when we when we implement this algorithm called the rate net or rate algorithm. The intuition, intuition behind using recency is that when a problem solver adds a new element to the working memory May, then maybe you want to do something with that working memory element. So, if there is another rule which matches this, then maybe that rule makes sense to be, it makes sense to use that rule now. So, in some sense, you want to maintain a chain of thought. You are making a sequence of inferences that if this is true, then this is true and now if that is true, then something else is true. So, if there is a rule which is looking at that, then give preference to that. So, recency will allow you to maintain a chain of thought. Of course, you can maintain the uh, conflict set as a priority queue sorted on uh, the recency for each rule which means the recency of the highest working memory element in that rule. The ops file language gave us a conflict resolution strategy called mean sense analysis MEA based on the problem solving strategy espoused by Simon and Newell who did a lot of work on human problem solving. So, the idea is to partition the set of rules on the context. These set of rules apply in this context, this set of rules apply in this context and so on and focus on one partition at a time. One can think of each partition as solving some specific sub goal or reducing some specific difference is the term that Newell and Simon spoke about. The context is set by the first pattern in the rule essentially. So, in their strategy, they first looked at the first pattern in the rule and then looked at the rest of the rules. All the rules in the same partition have the same first pattern. So, its context is do activity x, context is do activity y as the case may be and all rules which are concerned with activity x will be in the same partition or they have the same first pattern and likewise for others essentially. What the MEA strategy does, it applies recency to the first pattern. So, that if you are doing some activity, then you will continue to do that activity unless you switch context. So, which means you have to explicitly say, okay, I finished with this activity x, now I want to move to activity y. So, that some rule must do that 
and then you will switch to another context and then you will continue in that context essentially. And you can apply specificity for the remaining patterns that within the context choose the most specific rule. So, you can think of you know combinations like this. Next, we will see this rate algorithm this uh, which uses this structure called the rate net uh, which is used for efficiently implementing rule based systems. And it is quite a well known, it is quite a neat algorithm and I am sure you would appreciate it. But we will do that in the next video. I think.